So right. my name is Piotr Kononov. I'm the CEO at Dataido. We have a, a great guest today, uh, Daniela Graziani from MongoDB. Um, Daniela is an expert. Uh, he's a consulting, consulting engineer. engineer. Yeah, consulting engineer. He helps uh, companies make best use of MongoDB. He will uh, share his experience uh, and uh, knowledge uh, on this webinar today. Mm, yeah, so that's uh, that's it. Daniela, we're still all right. Still I'm gonna take it from here. Uh, let me share my screen. And this takes a second. There it is. All right, so today we're going to talk about schema design. And in particular, I titled the presentation from uh, schema design to schema discovery. And that is a little bit different from what you may be used to in a relational world. But MongoDB is, um, is very different from a relational database. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name, I mean, I already got the introduction from Piotr, but uh, my name is Daniele Graziani. I'm a consulting engineer with MongoDB. I often teach about MongoDB and schema design is one of the most important topics. That is, if you get schema design wrong in MongoDB, there is a good chance that your application will also be slow. So I would like to know who do we have participating in the audience. And uh, let me uh, give a little bit uh, uh, of attention to everybody here. If you can put in the chat uh, where you're from, uh, whether or not you're an Inter Milan fan, or you don't know what I'm talking about, and how many terabytes of data do you have? Uh, I would like to know uh, the terabytes of data uh, just to see how deeply involved you are with uh, databases. And uh, so whoever puts their answer first. <laughs> we already have yes. a winner. Yes, it is. But I think it's a club, right? Football club. And Inter Milan is the name of the soccer team I like. So I grew up being an Inter Milan fan. Uh, we say Inter Milan here in America now, but in uh, in Italy we just say Inter. So now. Um, Whoever puts the answers first gets 100 points and gets to leave the webinar at the end. Everybody else will be trapped in. So please put uh, an answer, uh, say something, uh, show me that we have a live audience here, not uh, just a recorded audience. Anybody? Yeah, we have uh, quite a lot of people, so please, people, um, share uh, the amounts of tera data, terabytes data. Oh, there you go. My name is Milika. I'm from Belgrade. Uh, Real Madrid rocks. OK, yes. Um, OK, can someone boot Varvara off the team? Uh, sorry, off the webinar. I was just kidding about that, Brussels. Uh, no, 10, 10 terabytes. Hey, JP, that uh, that's a pretty good amount of data that you're dealing with. Uh, Milan is a city in Italy. Uh, uh, that's right. So um, I'm really not expecting everybody to put uh, information, but uh, it's good if you do. Uh, Oh, Benjamin also has uh, 10 terabytes. So, uh, okay, quite a lot of data. Yeah, actually, you know, uh, so you guys are not people that are just kicking around the tires. You have some real problems here. You have big databases, you're trying to figure out 
Uh, yes, and, and Lukaku is great. So um, uh, JP, I think he's from Belgium, right? He said Brussels. So uh, I, I'm sorry that uh, we bought your great forward. But enough about soccer now. Let's uh, stick to the presentation. So how do you create a schema in MongoDB? You have to realize that MongoDB is a complete redesign of how to create databases. And um, it was created to take care of problems that um, our founders were having with using big relational databases. Specifically, the fact that um, data in an application is not in a tabular uh, format was a, a big problem. So they designed something that took those um, objects from your applications, take a, a JavaScript object that has sub documents and uh, arrays embedded in it, and essentially JSON, and use that format to store data in, uh, in the database. And the format, BSON, which is commonly referred to as binary JSON, even though that's not the meaning of it, um, is a format that allows you to store data with all the data types, but still uh, preserving the object format that lets you uh, store data in arrays, in uh, arrays of documents, using sub-documents, and so on. So why do I have a slide, the first slide, that starts with just the opposite? Because in MongoDB, the first thing you think about is the application. And that is not what happens in a relational world. In a relational world, you normalize your data first. Um, data normalization is the great science that you learn as you learn to uh, work with uh, relational databases, and it makes total sense, and it is something that you can uh, perform all day long. In fact, when I was using relational databases, um, I loved doing that. That was very um, agreeable to my way of thinking. So split your data into tables that are logical groupings of similar uh, information. After you've completed that step, you go in and you build your application. So your application needs data, great. Uh, write the queries that will get that data. Uh, unfortunately, that requires joining data, which is slow, or requires uh, running multiple uh, queries from your application to your database. Um, you can say that that is perfectly fine and it works. And I'm not going to say that it doesn't work. But in MongoDB, which is the perfect world, we cheat. Uh, so I've just said two things that are not true. MongoDB is not the perfect world. It's only the perfect world to me. Uh, you can disagree. And uh, when I say that we cheat, it's not that we are uh, thieves and liars and so on. But we really uh, want to make the database match the application so that it's custom built for the application. And so it has no concern about how you think about data and how you would split it into multiple tables. You really want to make sure that your application needs this data. So it should be able to get that data using just one query. And so if um, there are different sets of data that your application needs, that data needs to be 
like it would be in your application in a single object. And if you can model your data that way, your application will perform a lot better. Okay, you must adopt a, a new mindset. So you're no longer on a quest to create the perfect database. That's uh, what we were doing as relational DBAs or even developers. Your new quest is to create the database that is most effective working with your application. So is uh, we got a question from Kelly who has five terabytes. Is Mongo good for reporting across all customer application data? Uh, what kind of question is that, Kelly? Of course, MongoDB is good. Um, uh, yeah, please. Uh, she's is Kelly. Is it efficient? That's a, a great question. So what I'm telling you is that uh, if you build your queries to match your application it will be most efficient. If you build your database like it's a relational database, uh, then actually you should use a relational database. There is no question about that. A relational database is good at being a relational database. MongoDB is not good at being a relational database. MongoDB is a document database with data stored hopefully in a way that matches your application. And so if your application needs certain data, it only needs to go look in one place without doing joins or um, uh, multiple queries to get it. And if you do that, then MongoDB is wonderfully efficient. In fact, um, I said you have to cheat, right? You have to match the database to your application and also you have to make sure that the database has the data that your application will need it is possible that the application will need for example some uh, data summarized uh, we're not going to talk about that here but when you do an update in mongodb you can also summarize data and store it as summarized data so that you can do roll-ups later based on uh, data that's already pre-summarized for you. So instead of doing two uh, summaries, you, you do just one. And that just improves performance uh, greatly. So if that is the kind of application you have, you want to design your schema the right way. So here I have the last point on this slide is that with MongoDB there are very few universal truths and that is there is not one way to do things that's going to work for you in every case. Most questions are answered with it depends. So it depends is a consultant's favorite uh, answer to any question. So um, the question that Kelly uh, asked, is it efficient? It depends. It depends on how you build your schema. Uh, if you build it the right way, it's going to be tremendously efficient. And uh, to the point that uh, we are, typically able to take an application that was written in C, building a custom data structure, and we use MongoDB, and we're able to beat the performance of that. How? By uh, embedding data, typically, and uh, by reducing the number of queries, by matching the data to the application. Now, you've heard me say that at least five or six times by now. I'm going to try to stop saying that. Uh, if you haven't gotten it, uh, it's because you weren't listening, okay? So here is an example of embedding data. 
uh, I have a little object as it's denoted by the graph parentheses. I have a field, just a key value pair. It's a string. Then I have superpowers. So what are my superpowers? Cooking. I'm a vicious cook. I can cook like, no, I don't know. I, I, in my head, I can cook well. I like the food I cook. The food I cook is Italian. The other superpower I have is babysitting, but I'm not very strong at it. You see that these are um, documents, and there is an array of them. I could come back later and add an additional superpower. For example, speaker. And you guys will say strength one. And I'll say, OK, fine. I'm just getting started here. You know, eventually it will be a 10. Um, so a, a document built this way is able to uh, receive additional changes, to receive additional documents. If you have an IoT application, for example, an IoT that's sending me superpowers every minute, I can just keep on putting them inside this uh, array that I've created. Of course, using arrays eventually starts failing. Uh, you don't want to have an array with more than, say, 500 documents, because then all the updates that you're making uh, will take up place in uh, lots of room in the operations log and so on. So again, it depends. How many superpowers can you expect a, a person like me to have? Probably not that many. So 2, 10, 20, but not 500, not 1,000. So that's going to fit quite well into an array of documents. Um, any questions about what I've said so far? If, um, if you have any questions, please jump in, ask. I'm not going to sit here and wait for you not to ask any questions, so I'll move to the next slide. Um, actually, Daniela, um, yeah, <clears throat> so I would uh, maybe uh, add to what tr I think Kelly was trying to ask. So you're saying that the MongoDB is good for querying uh, exactly in the way that you design it to, to be queried, right? And I think uh, Kelly means uh, analytics, so asking questions that we, never, we didn't know before. So let's say, uh, if we go back to your example, um, what about if I wanted to see what's the most popular, uh, you know, superpower? Would yeah. Mongo be uh, efficient uh, at asking questions that were it was not designed for? Well, uh, actually, it is efficient. We have a whole uh, aggregation framework which can take advantage of indexes like uh, regular queries, but. Um, lets you transform your data in such a way that you can then uh, get the results that you want. Let's say, for example, you want to know what is the most common superpower across all people in, in the collection. So you need to find uh, documents and you need to group, you know, all the superpowers and get a value of how many times the superpower is repeated across all documents. You can certainly do that with the aggregation framework. So it's just uh, a little bit different because the data structure is a little bit different. But we have the group stage which lets you group for all documents or one document or multiple documents. And then we have aggregators that let you do calculations of all kinds. And um, it has come down to a point where in 4.4, the latest version of MongoDB, you can create your own custom aggregators if you want. Uh, 
a custom aggregator is not as efficient as uh, the ones that are built in, but you certainly can extend the power of our uh, aggregation framework to include the questions that um, uh, that are important to your use case. So for analytics, I would definitely recommend becoming uh, experts in the aggregation framework, which granted is not easy. It's not something that you pick up, you know, in a couple of hours and then you're a master. Uh, you, you have to uh, spend lots of time with it. But once you do, uh, the benefits are, are definitely strong uh, because you have like functions like uh, map and reduce that allow you to uh, perform a transformation on every document uh, in the uh, array. So I, I hope that answered your questions. Um, actually, I would have a follow-up question. So uh, it seems that you would need to become some kind of expert on the, you know, I, I don't know how how invasive this mechanism is. So would uh, would the DBA allow me to do it? Because let's compare it to uh, data warehouses in cloud, like, I don't know, Snowflake or Redshift, right? I don't need to be an expert to ask questions and they perform uh, queries efficiently. Um, with uh, MongoDB, it seems like there is uh, some kind of admin required or a data architect that will uh, build those, um, those aggregations, right? Okay, so uh, aggregations are typically built by developers. So there is an application that uh, lets you run queries and uh, aggregations, they can be built even by a user. But an aggregation query is typically a complex uh, aggregation. It can be simple. It can be as simple as a normal find. Uh, so the example that you gave, uh, can you get data out simply? Certainly you can. I mean, if you're just trying to get a list of documents uh, that matches your query, that's very easy to do. Um, just like it is easy to do in SQL. If you're trying to transform your data so that it can answer a different question, then that is something more complicated and you need um, to figure out exactly uh, all the stages involved. The aggregation framework uh, has a concept of a pipeline. So uh, you do one thing and it, you have documents coming in and documents coming out. The pipeline stage can do things such as filtering, that's the match stage, or add new fields into your documents, that's like the project or the add field stage, or do some grouping so that you can calculate um, the, the total uh, sales for the quarter and that's the group stage. And then you can do a transformation of the data so that um, uh, you can come up with some other results. So that will be like a project stage using dollar map, which is uh, a map function. So the possibilities are endless. It starts out simple and it gets complicated the more complicated your questions are. When it gets complicated, it is not easy to, um, to come up with the answer. So that requires uh, experience. Piotr, I'm sorry I couldn't say, oh yes, it's a snap, but... Uh, oh, uh, actually, I, I don't uh, want that answer. I would like uh, to help uh, people make their choice, right? So they know what to use MongoDB for and what not to use it for, right? For instance, analytics, it seems like. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we are here to learn, so. So we think analytics is a, a good uh, use case for MongoDB. Uh, then, sorry, then you, you will decide for yourself whether that works, but you have to give it a try. And also in MongoDB Atlas, we have the tool called Charts that lets you create 
your data, transform your data using the aggregation framework and then build charts on top of it. And that means that inside the ecosystem of MongoDB, you can um, visualize your data and you don't have as many visualizations as uh, Tableau will give you, but we certainly have a full set of um, visualizations, including all the geographic um, uh, visualizations, which are really powerful. So, uh, yes, definitely give MongoDB a, um, a try for all your use cases. So, now I'm going to have a, a quick slide because this is the question that comes up uh, very frequently, you know, to embed or not to embed. So you have to hold the skull and look at it and say, that is the question. Like um, you've learned in Shakespeare's. So it, there is not a hard, fast rule, just like I said before. In, in some cases, it is obvious that the data should be embedded. Typically, all one-to-one -one cases, and you need the data for your application, then that data should be embedded in the main collection. But uh, there are some situations that have multiple answers, going back to the, it depends, right? It depends on the application. Um, will you need to load that data into your application window? And if the answer is yes, um, then it's a good idea to embed it. I'm not going to beat this point to death. Um, you understand that you have to evaluate each situation depending uh, on your application needs. However, I went into an additional slide. So what does it mean that schema decisions depend on the application? So I try to put myself in the shoes of someone that's trying to uh, move from a relational database. So the answer is the answer that I have already given. What data is needed to support each application view? You have to lay out your application screens and then say, okay, uh, screen one needs this data, screen two needs that data. Okay, what uh, schema is going to take care of these uh, scenarios? And avoid anti patterns. So, for example, you have a, uh, a collection of customers and you need to use that collection for your application. Uh, your customer uh, collection has data that you're collecting from all kinds of different uh, uh, sources. And you end up with things like superpowers, which are totally unnecessary for your application, which is uh, like a banking application where you want to show the customer, their transactions with the bank. You don't want to show them what their superpowers are. You don't even know who started collecting that information. I mean, come on, who does that? Um, so if you have all those extra fields, you really should consider putting them into a separate database, a separate collection. But let's say you don't because you have reasons not to. Um, you need to write your queries not to transfer all that unnecessary information across the wire. So make sure that you use the, excuse me, the project uh, uh, capability, which is similar to the select uh, capability in uh, SQL. So, um, should you store all that extra information? Chances are you shouldn't. You should move it to a different collection because you don't need it for this application. 
what about transactions? Uh, what about the use case where, you know, I'm taking orders and I want to keep my inventory updated. Um, and I want to do it as an all or nothing type situation. Well, in that case, you can use transactions. And in that case, uh, also, it is very likely that your orders will be one collection and your uh, products will be a different collection. And the information about inventory is stored in the products collection but the changes come from the orders collection and so you use uh, a transaction however the use of transactions can be extended to such uh, a point that it is not a uh, good use in mongodb uh, so you have to adopt that new uh, mentality and say do I really need transactions here because if you have your data uh, into a single collection then every update that you do it's atomic so you don't need transactions around that so you need to spot situations where things are different between relational and MongoDB and that comes with experience also it comes with proper planning you need to plan your application carefully and then say will i need transactions here and i picked on transactions because that is common in relational uh, databases another uh, thing is triggers which you know we have in mongodb as change streams any questions so far? I'm going to move to the next. So what if? What if is uh, something that drives me crazy because my kids just come up with the craziest what if questions. And I'm like, that is never going to happen. So why are you asking that question? And uh, I, I don't know. But in the world of applications actually you have to be prepared for all scenarios and you should ask those questions about your applications um, so you ask what if my data grows tenfold or what if i come back and i want to uh, do that instead well write it down and uh, and say okay if that were the case this is the change i would have to make to my schema great that needs to be documented and we'll get back to documentation in a minute and here is another uh, thing that i'm bringing up about schema design in mongodb and all databases and that is things change over time um, your user needs change, your application needs change, and therefore your schema changes. Your manager says, I want to track this additional field. Um, okay, it doesn't have to be so complicated, right? You know that in MongoDB, if you want to add a field, you just um, use that additional field and you save it. Oh my goodness what's going on here i have no idea what the schema is and you could use a tool that analyzed this that schema and uh, this is when everybody needs to say hello to that data because um, a mongodb schema can get uh, messy quickly and uh, you, you need to document it somewhere and you want that uh, documentation to persist so um document your decisions so that you can come back a year later and say okay why did we store data this way if it's documented it will answer that question and then you'll say okay because the application needed to do this but that is no longer the case now we need to offer something else so it's a good moment to adopt a new schema 
great document that new schema and data edo lets you do that which is uh, unique because there are no other tools that let you do that kind of documentation and, um, and so i really support using data edo in uh, alongside your databases and that's why i put that third bullet point the sooner you start using that data the sooner you will think metho methodically about your schema so now all of a sudden i'm speaking differently at the beginning of this uh, presentation i sounded like uh, mongodb was okay the application is doing this so we'll do that very lackadaisical but in reality it is very methodical and uh, understanding your application is actually a complex process so um, you may uh, develop your applications and there's a whole cycle and you will have different iterations of your data structures and therefore your schema will be changing and with that data you can document that and um, I, I am new to that data I have to admit it in fact I've played with it for five minutes and now I know everything there is to do um, there is to know about that data no I don't I've been playing with it for just a few weeks and I'm becoming familiar with it and what um, what I see is very uh, very exciting but here I um, I logged into my Atlas uh, database and uh, it was just that I clicked on the add and it uh, asked me for the connection string I provided the connection str string it went in and then it said okay great you have these databases and uh, what database do you want to connect to I said the test database and inside the test database it said okay you have these collections which ones do you want to import I checked the boxes it was um, it was pretty easy I and I imported a bunch of them just to see what happened and um, so I found that the most significant one was uh, the recipes collection because it has some sub documents and as you see here um, you can have arrays sub documents with the sub documents fields which are nicely grayed out so that you can see the field name but you can also see the the fields that led to it so the name of uh, the sub document is marginal benefit and then inside the sub document you have days and calculated benefit now don't ask me questions about what does that mean because uh, I developed this so long ago that uh, uh, now that I've thought about it I could explain it but uh, don't go there so history so here I was supposed to so recipes were supposed to be used multiple times right so I have an array of documents and uh, say I make spaghetti alla carbonara which is uh, a dish that if you don't know well you're missing out on something because it's fairly easy uh, and you can make it a number of different ways so I wanted to track my family's ratings so the user is um, like my son my daughter my wife myself the score that we give and a rating like out of five stars I don't know why I have both scores and rating but uh, and then a comment so then I can go back and see which uh, uh, which recipe is most popular uh, which recipe my son likes the best uh, which recipes my son will actually eat uh, which is very complicated uh, exercise uh, he's uh, six years old and 
kind of picky, although um, you know he ended up in the in the right family. My wife is Japanese, and she makes great Japanese food. I make what I think is good Italian food. Uh, you know, uh, that's not bad. Uh, I wish I was born into a family like that, but he doesn't know it, so he's still picky because I think kids are just supposed to be picky. So um, back to Data Edo, which is why you joined this uh, webinar. You, you see that uh, you get the, all the data types. These are the BSON data types, and I'm glad to see that, for example, it uh, got that days was a decimal uh, data type. I, I don't know why I make that a decimal data type, but I did. Uh, honestly, I think it's a bit of a mistake, but maybe I made it uh, a decimal data type because uh, the number of days can be decimal. I made that uh, recipe five and a half days ago because right now it's morning time and I made it in the evening. So if I use a date difference um, uh, function, it's going to give me the result as five and a half days. And so I'm going to store it as five and a half. Honestly, I should just store it as an integer, right? I mean, but these are considerations that uh, you will make when you design your own application. Um, it looks like, uh, like you've learned a lot about your own design, right? Just by connecting to. <laughs> yes. And uh, and that's exactly what that data does. It, by exposing these things and putting them into an easy to uh, view format, it really uh, prompts you to ask yourself questions and to make improvements and so on. And one thing that I pointed out to Piotr is that uh, the underscore ID field is not nullable. Um, if you uh, want to get my explanation on underscore ID is a basically your primary key in MongoDB. And it can be a, a scalar va value, so a string, a number, but it can also be a sub document so you can have two fields inside underscore ID. Those two fields together will determine the uniqueness of each record. Or you can uh, leave it blank and MongoDB will create an object ID data type. And um, uh, that's what this ID data type is. And the object ID is essentially a unique value that MongoDB calculates for you. Um, under the description column here, you see that I'm uh, writing notes. And actually, later, I wrote bigger and bigger notes, and they fit, like the, the row expanded. And I was glad because I started uh, writing notes about changes that I wanted to make and so on. So um, there is also a view where you can uh, take a look at the table and write extensive notes about the, the table, which in MongoDB we call collection. That's where you would track different versions of your, uh, of your schema. And uh, that kind of leads to the schema versioning um, pattern that we have in MongoDB. But that is a different subject, and um, I will not get into that. So in conclusion, you, know, you must document your database to be able to explain it. Uh, Using Dataedo, you can include an explanation of each schema version in the collection, and uh, you will be able to see how that needs to translate into uh, support for your application. Really, this is backwards. Again, uh, your application changes, so your schema needs to change according to the application, 
and uh, you go into the application, the data edo application, and you make a note that you're changing the schema to do this and that. So I have touched on the basic philosophical differences between a relational database and MongoDB and how you build schemas based on your applications. I hope that came across. Now uh, you have a tool that Edo that will uh, document that schema and let you plan for changes. Should you take over from here, Piotr? Yeah, I, maybe I would like to add to that, that it's, um, uh, so you're uh, talking from the position of person who actually designed it and then uh, can learn about the design and improve it. But I think the what is even more important, uh, value that comes from data edo is that you can communicate that knowledge. Um, so let's yes. say you design it and uh, you know you know you have some recollection, some concept of what you meant like you know six years uh, six six months ago or a year ago. Uh, but other people will only have to guess. and uh, the real power comes from uh, that person who designed it or spent some time trying to figure out the concepts, you know the, the models that can put all this information, you know, what that, what does uh, the score and rating means, right? For instance, which one should we use? Which one should we trust? And when, once you put that information, it's available for everyone uh, who'd like to use this data. So you said uh, we could help you improve the design. And uh, I would say we help you actually use the data uh, that you have. Yeah. And, uh... I think that's extremely valuable, and I'm going to share the product with uh, some of my fellow uh, consulting engineers and get their feedback because um, we often run into this problem. And so this would be a, a, a very good solution. And I am going to suggest that you create a web app based on MongoDB Atlas to store all your uh, all your data, but that is entirely up to you. Yeah, that's a that's a different story. Um, <laughs> we are a little short uh, of time. We answered some some of the questions. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, maybe you have uh, a few minutes uh, to to touch on something. Otherwise, you can you can send it. Uh, to us after the webinar, and hopefully Daniela will be some kind to, to answer them over email. It depends on my mood, on the quality of coffee. Oh, okay. I hope the coffee will yes. be great. Okay, we have yeah. a have a question. Uh, uh, how do you link to another table? Okay. Yes. So uh, in MongoDB, uh, you can embed data, but you don't always. Uh, want to have all that data from another collection embedded in. So sometimes you keep the two collections separate. So you provide uh, an array field inside the collection and uh, you have the values that uh, you want to link to. That's if it's a many-to-many -many relationship. If it's a one-to-many uh, relationship, um, if it's one too many, then you need to just have a field with the um, ID of the foreign uh, collection. So then it, you uh, do a join using dollar lookup in aggregation, or you run two queries. The first query gets the values that you want to get, and then you run another query against uh, the second application sorry, the second collection. So also, what if you don't know what your application will look like? So if you don't know what your application will look like, you have to uh, find out what your application will look like. It's that basic. Um, you, you cannot build a schema without having a use case for it. So uh, that's what... Um, that's um, 
Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would that's recommend. Similar to, to relational world, right? You need to know, you know, what what data you're gonna be uh, storing. Right. Okay, I see no more question. Okay, Daniela, that was really uh, awesome. Thank you for your presentation. It was really uh, great to to see that you actually, um, on top of the perfect uh, MongoDB, you can you can see the way of improvements. You know, that something could be uh, even more perfect. Uh, and I'm really glad that Dataedo allows you to actually make uh, better designs uh, of of your data. Hopefully. Yeah. It it definitely does. So thank you for creating this product. And uh, if anybody has questions, wants to move to MongoDB, we have a free Atlas cluster. You can test things around. And it's, why not? Yeah, give it a try. Um, I see some screenshots, uh, saw some screenshots, screenshots, yeah, and the analytics and the reporting looks pretty nice. So, yeah, if you are using uh, MongoDB, consider using the cloud version, and then see yourselves. Yeah. Okay. All right. Daniela, um, have a good day. Um, thanks everyone, and uh, hope to see you in the, in future webinars. Thank you. See Thank you. you. Bye.